What's up, YouTube? I want to make a uh, little video here about a quote that keeps popping up. And this quote has been used against me a few times. And I, I, it always baffles me when it's used against me because it's, it's one of my favorite quotes. It's probably one of the smartest things I've ever said. And um, the people who use it against me are people who also should be subjected to this quote. And it's a quote about um, theists and whether or not um, they should seek mental help. And they should. Um, and um, inevitably, anybody who's ever used it against me um, is a theist. Although the first person that I remember using it against me um, was an atheist. And he used it against me to tell me that I hate my mom, um, that I'm a hater, and that I must hate my mother. And uh, the quote, um, as you can hear in this quote, how much I hate my mom, I talk about, um, I say, quote, I love my mother. Right, right there, you can hear how much I hate her. Um, I said, I would gladly take her to the mental hospital. Visit her, support her, and help her overcome her delusional beliefs if a hospital would admit her and if she would go. We both know that mental hospitals don't admit people for theism. However, if we change the name of, names of the characters in the Bible, most mental hospitals would. I contend that if I wasn't willing to do this for my mother, then I would be exhibiting that I care less about my mother than I should. It is, in fact, because I'd be willing to do this that I can contend that I obviously care for her. Um, now, for those that don't know, my mother is born again Christian. She's a lot like uh, the God Warrior. You can um, Google that and find a little bit about the God Warrior. Um, my mother doesn't yell as much, but she's much more rational. She believes that she owes her life to Jesus. Um, she once left a job and became a missionary, um, but a missionary in this country. Um, and, uh, you know, she goes to church all the time. She gives um, a, a good percentage of her very small income to uh, her church. And um, she's let religion guide her the whole way. And she's let it affect many relationships that she's had in her life, including the one that she's had with me. And this is one of the reasons I speak up against religion, because I know uh, the sort of um, division that it can cause um, when you can't even have a conversation with somebody without their invisible friend coming up, and that's how it was with my mother. And um, it's it's hard to relate to somebody when, to them, everything relates to God. And the atheists who are listening to this know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I can even remember a time when I had a barbecue and like something about a piece of chicken falling on the ground. I don't remember the exact story, but I remember my mother somehow managed to correlate that to Jesus. Um and that was at the point where I just said something like, I got to go by. Um, anyway, uh, if you listen to this quote, um, I say, if a hospital would admit my mother and if she would go. And I explain how we both know that uh, that wouldn't happen. And so, in essence, this was, um, uh, you know, just a hypothetical, um, a what if situation. Um, a what if situation that should be happening around the world. Thea should seek mental help. Um and, and I think really most theists could be cured by, um, you know, just basic lessons in critical thought and then applying them to their lives. Like, for example, what other beliefs do you have that you have no proof for? Name five beliefs that you have in your life that you have no proof for. And then explain to me why God belief gets a free pass. Why does God belief get a free pass? But yet if I told you that um, a blue troll created God... Why would you need proof for that? Why would you not believe me if I said that, if you're a theist listening? Um, and if I, if I could provide no proof, which is the amount of proof that you have for God, um, why wouldn't that be enough proof? No proof. All right? And most likely, most people go through their daily lives trying to avoid scams and things like that, and they look for proof. And, um, of course, there are people who do get scammed, and maybe that's because... They aren't thinking critically enough and looking for the sort of proof, and maybe they're not because they've been taught throughout their life that faith is good enough. So, anyway, this quote is, like I said, it's been used against me a few times. Usually when it's used against me, it's taken out of context, and um, they manage to change the quote into something entirely different. Um, but even when they do, it still looks like a good representation of, of our position. The most recent person to use it against us is uh, a, a stalker of mine who uh, follows us around the internet, uh, constantly tries to edit our Wikipedia page. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, he's well known in our community, at least for the people that were around in the beginning, as one of the guys that everybody loves to hate. Um, apparently, he's now stalking us on YouTube. He uploaded a video um, 
about this quote to one of our other videos. I didn't accept it because it wasn't relevant to that topic, but if you want to upload your video to this video, you're more than welcome to. Um, so in, at the end of the at the end of the video, he basically all he does is show this quote in context, um, and then at the end it says, "Rational response squad, emotional question mark or rational question mark." Well, if we were only one of those, I would hope that you guys would be smart enough to abandon us, leave us. If I told you that I was only rational and that I wasn't emotional, I, I would hope that you would leave right now and not ever support us ever again. Um, the quote was obviously emotional and rational all at the same time. I reached a rational and sane conclusion based on the evidence that I had. I also reached an emotional conclusion that I should care for my mother and love her. Um, and because I care for my mother and love her, I should do the sane and rational thing. Um, we all have emotions. I have uh, feelings of care and love and uh, anger sometimes. And, um, you know, it's ridiculous to think that um, that is the sort of question that you would ask at the end of that video. So uh, the video it made, I mean, seriously, when Kelly and I saw it, to us, it looked like a commercial for us. It looked like a commercial that we would create um, with – I think you could even leave in the emotional or rational question mark at the end, although it probably would be stated a little bit differently if it was a commercial. But that could suffice as a commercial to get people interested in coming to our website. And I don't understand why the haters don't realize that every time they talk about us, they're attracting attention to us. Um, you know, Graydon Square had this problem. Go check out Graydon Square's video called Addressed. All right, look up Graydon Square, look up Addressed. Um, we have another blogger. In fact, this person, this uh, this this, uh, this blogger, I'm not going to mention his name either, um, who, uh, who Graydon Addressed, um, he has used this quote against us, and he and his friend has used it to call me a Nazi. Of course, my grandfather was killed by Hitler, and my father and stepmother are Jewish, and... Um, I have a lot more respect for my Jewish roots than I do for the sort of upbringing that my mother tried to put on me with her um, sort of intolerant, um, Christian, uh, hypocritical, um, you know, lifestyle. And um, so anyway, without going too far off topic, that's the gist of the quote. I think the quote's great. Um, every time I see it, it makes me happy. Um, it makes me realize that I'm getting to them. Um, but it also gets me upset in the sense that they don't get it. They think it's a bad thing that um, theists should be admitted, admitted into mental hospitals, and this is probably because they're theists. The guy who just uploaded a video, he's a theist. In fact, he's so dishonest um, that he will – and he's not a Christian. He's a theist. Um, he's so dishonest that he will tell you that um, he's an atheist if it suits him. I've seen him become an atheist twice and then become a theist twice two more times within a week of each other. Um, anyway, I wanted to kind of give you some background, the, the, the sort of the science behind it. Albert Ellis is one of the most important psychotherapists of our time. He created um, CBT, which is the most widely used form of therapy in psychology in the world today, Okay. Um, is it, it um, you know is used by our um, partner uh, Tadangst, who has gotten two master's degrees in psychology and he's now working on a doctorate in psychology and he completely agrees with us that theism is a mind disorder. Um, Kelly, if if you guys don't know, Kelly is our psychology expert here and hopefully she'll weigh in in a minute. But before she does, um. I've got a couple of quotes from Albert Ellis for you, and I'm going to put uh, a link to the entire article, this Albert Ellis article, on the uh, side column there. Um, Dr. Ellis says, If one of the requisites for emotional health is acceptance of uncertainty, then religion is obvious, obviously the unhealthiest state imaginable. Uh, he also says, Since its prime reason for being is to enable the religionist to believe in a mystical certainty. Religiosity, to a large degree, essentially is masochism, and both are forms of mental sickness. 
Now, this is one of the most important psychologists of our time saying this, okay? And here's one more quote, and it's um, he writes it in a very intellectual manner, so let me sum it up before I even read it to you. But the gist of what he's saying is, is that psychologists who allow people to get treatment and to try to make their religious beliefs fit, to try to allow them to continue to hold their religious beliefs within their treatment for whatever mental illness they have, is doing them a huge disservice. It is actually contributing to their emotional illness, all right? Because their emotional illness is due in part to religion, or it is part of their emotional illness. And this is uh, what he says, direct quote. Uh, religion goes hand in hand with the basic irrational beliefs of human beings. These keep them dependent, anxious, and hostile, and thereby create and maintain their neurosis and psychosis. What, then, is the role of psychotherapy in dealing with the religious views of disturbed patients? Obviously, the sane and effective psychotherapist should not, as many contemporary psychoanalytic, Jungian, client-centered, and existentialist therapists have contended he should, go along with the patient's religious orientation and try to help these patients live successfully with their religions because doing so is the equivalent of trying to help them live successfully with their emotional illness. This is probably one of the most three most important psychologists in the history of the earth, okay? And this is what he has to say on it. Um, we've also got a book here. Kelly's read this one. Kelly, why don't you weigh in on this because I've only skimmed it. This is The Mind of the Bible Believer by uh, Edmund Cohen. And he says basically the same thing, but I mean, go ahead. What are there differences or what, what's, what's the gist of what he's saying? Uh, well, pretty much Edmund Cohen just lays out the basis for God belief and how it affects your brain and how prayer and church attendance and things like that serve as a form of self indoctrination and the difficulty that one has trying to compartmentalize their different beliefs and constantly fighting their doubts and just trying to work their irrational God belief into a somewhat rational thought process. So, I mean, the book really lays out the ways in which it is harmful for the individual believer. I mean, not society, but the person who believes it to, like, try to essentially, like, assault themselves psychologically by believing in God and making themselves do that, not having bad thoughts and not having any kind of like doubts or anything, which causes them to feel guilt about their God belief. But it really does actually change the structure of your brain. I mean, due to just normal neuronal plasticity and the way that your brain changes and adapts over time. So yeah, that's, all we're going to touch on this quote. Well, you know what? Let me let me give you one example, though. I say in that quote, I say um, that if you changed the names of the characters in the Bible, most mental hospitals would admit people for theism. Let me give you an example. Um, I believe in the blue troll, his son, blue troll son, and um, the holy troll. This is the I call this the triune. And um, what's so funny? This is my belief. Why are you laughing at my beliefs? Why don't you respect my beliefs? Anyway, so I believe in the blue troll, and the blue troll sent his son to sacrifice himself to himself so that others could escape the evil and vengeful wrath of himself. Just like Jesus. Same thing. Um, and, you know, this blue troll, it doesn't cause me any harm, really. I mean, I give up 10% of my money to... This guy named Steve down the block who told me the story, and um, you know, I hope I hope that doesn't stop you from subscribing. By the way, because it's it's money that I had separate. I don't give him money. I don't give him RS money. Um, but I, but he but he does get a lot of money from me. I mean, over the course of my life, I might give him you know a couple hundred thousand dollars, and uh, you know that's not a problem at all. That's not dangerous or you know um, a poor use of my money. That's obviously a very good use of my money because. He's delivering me an important message, um, the message of the Blue Troll. And the Blue Troll and his son and, and the Holy Troll obviously love me. And um, occasionally I have to fight off things the Blue Troll suggests to me because I have conversations with the Blue Troll, obviously. Um, you know, things like other people that have happened to other people. For example, there was a guy in Philadelphia two years ago who killed his three kids because um, God – 
told him, or Jesus Christ told him, actually. It's different. Jesus Christ told him that um, he needed to kill his children so that they wouldn't go to Satan because um, Satan was trying to pull them into his circle. So he killed them, and that way he got, they got sent to heaven. And there was uh, somebody a couple years ago that uh, pushed their kids off a bridge in California, and um, and that was so that they could get sent to heaven. Um, of course, you know we know about um, you know the uh, Andrea Yates. Um, you know, so this has happened to other people. Not going to happen to me, though. I mean, the blue. I do have to fight off issues with the blue troll. The blue troll does tell me to, you know, harm anybody who doesn't believe like I do. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I fully buy that. But you never know. Maybe someday I could get pushed over the edge. Now, this example is funny. You're probably laughing at it. Um, maybe you're not. If you're a Christian, you're probably not. It is no different than your religious beliefs if you are a Christian. Um, it is basically the same story with the names changed. And I could get put into a mental hospital if I actually believed this to be true. Not just could. They would accept me. And I use the blue troll example for a reason. I know of a case where a man in a mental hospital believed that he should worship a blue troll. Okay? So this is a real world example. And Christians, Muslims, Hindus, they all have these same irrational beliefs. They're like walking, ticking time bombs. And often they're so irrational that they'll use quotes that expose the sort of irrationality that they have to try to attack us. And they make my point for me. Thanks. Um, to those who have called us, uh, you know, Nazi or hater as a result of this quote, here's a little hate for you. Fuck you. It's pretty obvious what the quote is about. I say I love my mom. It's pretty obvious. I stand by the quote. I want to continue to stand by the quote. Let me move on before it gets too uh, too too long again. I wanted to briefly touch on the other videos that we have going right now. We have a lot of good thoughts coming in about the next big project for the Rational Response Squad. Please help us out. There's also um, a funny conversation on the Burka Challenge video in which – um, somebody suggested that Kelly was repressed because she was dressed in a t-shirt. And a sports bra. Sports bra. Okay. No, She's repressed. We, we're, we're oppressing all the women by suggesting that they wear bikinis. Oh, right. Well, well, right. Because but no, no, no. But choice that's, to wear a bikini is oppression. Yeah, but not really, freedom. It's oppression. But really, what she said was they can wear whatever they're comfortable with. If you listen to the video, except this person changed the. It's so dumb. Yeah. There are people that argue for whatever reason. I don't know why they do these like – I guess the women's right movement really fucked themselves. Like women's liberation the, – the women in charge of this must have really fucked it up. I, I don't know because it, it always sat weird to me like how – if women are liberated, how can they not wear what they want? Like women who want to dress you know, in next to nothing – who want to dress like that. Maybe they like the attention. I don't know. Maybe this is just what they feel comfortable in. For whatever reason, it seems like there's always some women's rights advocate out there screaming and hemming and hawing about how women shouldn't be dressed like this. And it always sounds weird with me that, like, you're fighting for women's rights, and yet as soon as a woman's wearing this, you don't even, you don't even ask. Which you don't even ask if this is what she wants to wear. Yeah. You just go right in with your argument. She must be oppressed. Blah, blah, blah. It's the... It's lame. It's well, if you exert lame. your right to wear a bikini, then you're going to get mad at me that you're hidden right there. Oh, sorry. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. You're somehow oppressing people. But, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. And, I mean, this is just completely off the cut, but my cuff. But my gut reaction whenever I see something like that is that this is a woman who physically feels uncomfortable wearing a bikini and therefore is pissed off that I can. And that's, you know, it's a, sh it's a shame on two accounts. One, that, you know, that they don't feel comfortable and that is, you know, that's upsetting, but also that it leads to retardation. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this discussion on our forum before. We've had this discussion a few times. And... Uh, Anybody who's wa watching the comments that, uh, you know, I've been doing most of the commenting off the Rational Response account um, on that on that Burka Challenge video. And 
I apologize if it seems like I'm being too rude. Uh, YouTube has a 500 character limit, so it's kind of hard to make like a good argument against something, especially when somebody ties like 48 knots in three sentences, and then you have to untie them, and it takes you like 12 paragraphs. Um, in addition to that, I don't really have the time to deal with that, but that is what I do for a living. I respond to irrational claims, and those in that thread are irrational. Yeah, not to mention the fact that we just had a huge thread about this on our forums where we don't have a 500 character limit and this just happened like what was that? A two week, weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago. And so yeah, it's still kind of fresh in our brains. The annoyance is still there. So yeah, if you feel like we're contributing to the oppression of women. Just come on over to our websites. We'll direct you to the thread, and then we can, you know, have it out from there. If you don't feel like we've already sufficiently destroyed your inane well, argumentation, I'll link. I'll, I'll I'll link on the side to the Rever video that we have where we where we made fun of this argument, and then you can also see on the right hand side of that how to get to the thread on our message board. Um. So, yeah, in that, you know, the idea was that Kelly would take off a burqa and then be dressed in a bikini. And somebody said something like, you shouldn't do anything that you wouldn't want to do. And I said, you shouldn't ask people to do something that you wouldn't want to do. And I said, I would ne I never would. And they were like, well, then why don't you get into a G-string and show us some skin? Well, first the comment was show us some skin. And um, so it didn't make any sense because I never said that men should wear, get G-strings and – I don't know. The arguments are so dumb. I feel weird even talking about them to you guys because I'm imagining that 98% of you are seeing right through them. But I don't know. I feel like, you know, at least we should be on record. So um, I guess I was like re-challenged to show some skin as if that meant something. So here you go. Had enough skin for you? 